Uh, there we are. <laughs> I have no idea what it says in the chat because I'm looking at other stuff. Uh, you don't want to know. You know. Okay, <laughs> excellent. All right, welcome to I Think You Think. And, uh, oh, sorry, my phone started trying to do a video call for some reason. <laughs> Anyway, uh, welcome to I Think You Think, and we have two, a uh, couple of topics for you guys today. Uh, we're going to kind of play it by ear and see how it goes, but uh, we're looking at a review of the new Star Trek game that came out last month, a review of the Star Trek movie and that just came out uh, last week, right? Right? Last week? Correct. Yes. Thank you. Excellent. In America. It was two weeks oh, ago. Yes. Everywhere else in the world, basically. Yes, because Americans need to learn that we aren't the number one country to get movies anymore. So that's no, just the way. We don't like it. waiting. We there don't like go. waiting. Mm -hmm. um, but there will be there are spoilers for that movie, so we will kind of warn you before we just start like shouting out all the things about you know who dies or doesn't die. And oh wait, oh crap. <laughs> anyway, uh, and then uh, if we have time, and I hope we do, we'll get into uh, NASA versus kind of privatized space exploration. Um, and uh, kind of go from there, but let me start off with our fun little intro. Hello! Today is May 23rd, 2013, and you are listening to I Think You Think, a podcast that puts a new spin on debate and discussion. I'm Justin, and on the other side of my computer screen is James. Howdy, folks. And we are your hosts and carry no credentials worth noting. Today, our guest is the captain. Hello. As she is also my wife, so you know, I'm lucky. I think you think <laughs> I think you think it's a podcast that focuses on what we, your hosts, think, but also what you think. Too many times we spend debates and discussions talking past one another, and not enough time trying to learn and understand why someone thinks what they think. This is what makes I think you think different, because we are focused on why people think the way that they do and why we think the way that we do. James and I believe that the forum of ideas should be open to everyone, and everyone should have the opportunity to challenge and be challenged by ideas. We are not here to pass judgment, but merely discuss ideas and topics. Uh, yes, this podcast, first and foremost, is a conversation between us and hopefully you. Feel free to email us, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and at the Chicago Now blogs. Uh, links are facebook.com slash ithink.youthink, chicagonow.com slash I think you think, and then there's dashes between each one of those, and I'm not going to say it all. Uh, Twitter.com slash I think underscore you think. All of those links can be found in the underbar of this video. They can be found on our Facebook and such and such. I think you think is produced by Stolen Arts Productions and is recorded live at Fisher International Studios. And you can't see anybody's faces yet, so we're going to change that. Oh, that's not my face. There's my face. <laughs> there. <laughs> there it is. There we go. All right. Okay. Um, so we are going to get started by going right into uh, the game. We're going to review the Star Trek game. Uh, our resident expert on Star Trek is here, the captain. There you are. Uh, and she is my wife. And so be gentle or don't, you know, whatever. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I want to give um, the captain an opportunity to uh, give us kind of her take on it. I've got my own feelings about it. We'll kind of explore at some point, I think, and then James can listen and then decide um, who is better. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> there you go. All right. Uh, so, uh, not to put you too much on the spot, on the spots, Captain, but why don't you uh, go and um, start wherever you feel you want to start? All right. Well, I'll uh, start off by saying that I am the not the gamer of the family. Um, our son is actually a bigger gamer than I am. However, I am the Trekkie of the family. So we pre-ordered the game basically as soon as we could. And I was really, really excited for it. And I think compared to the rest of Star Trek games, it's really, really good. But Star Trek games are generally pretty crap, so that's not really saying much. Um, I think the concept of the original story that they had was really fun, and in the spirit of rebooting the original series, they, did, they took the Gorn and they uh, sort of recast them, and they fleshed out their culture a whole lot more which I think they did really, really, really well. Um, I really enjoyed having a lot of 
the same voice actors as from the movies, which I think was very, very helpful for, to uh, make the game actually worthwhile. Um, as a game, it's probably not the best in the world, and I kind of would have wished we had more playable characters than just Kirk and Spock, but I did have a lot of fun playing it, so I guess that's the point. And how far have you gotten uh, through it so far? Uh, I've gotten to bones on the uh, on the one uh, star base, so I don't know quite how far into the game that is. I, but it's not that far, I don't think. I have no idea. Uh, Hours-wise, <laughs> how, how many hours have you played? Uh, about two. Okay, so two hours. So just getting yeah. into the game. Yeah. Um, so, quick sorry, question. Go ahead. Really. Mm -hmm. um, do you think giving it, uh, we talked about this like two podcasts ago, if they would have had a uh, Ohura as a playable character, being the only main female character from the first movie at least, do you think that would have made it a little more accessible to you? Like would that would have been the one extra character um, being a female gamer? I would have gone with Uhura. Um, definitely should have been an option because you're right, it would bring in a lot more females to want to play it. But I would have really wanted to play as Bones, honestly. Yeah. Because you can't have Kirk and Spock and not Bones. Right, right. Which is kind of a weakness in Reboot in general. And, and just kind of as a clarification, um, the movie is a, uh, it's a sequel to, I'm sorry, not the movie, the game is a sequel to the first movie, but it's a prequel to the to second into movie. Darkness, yes. So, yes, so anything uh, that, um, that, which I thought was kind of cool when you told me about it, that uh, anything that takes place in that game, uh, one, it's considered canon, mm -hmm. part of that universe, and two, it doesn't, it, it, I'm, I'm assuming because I haven't gotten that much farther, uh, basically, I'm probably less than where you're at, um, but it, I'm assuming that they might give hints to the movie or, or nods to the movie, but... Um, it, some of the writers did say that there were um, shades of what was going to happen in the movie. Okay. In the video game. And they did work closely with the video game designers as to getting everything right for the universe because it's considered canon. It's even referenced in Into Darkness. Okay. All right. What, what, uh, what do you think is... What was your favorite part so, so far of playing the game? Um, my favorite part so far was just being able to walk around the Starbase to see all the different things and being able to um, look at all the different weapons tech that they have. And it, it gave a certain depth to the universe that you can't really give in a movie. Like, you can't go down, oh, that corridor over there because the action is actually happening over this way. But you could in the game. So that's one of the things I really liked about it. Was there anything you didn't like about it? <laughs> <laughs> we're laughing because we're laughing because from the moment we opened that game and started playing, we it's it's co-op, which is kind of cool. Uh, it which is cool. It I think is a great thing because more games, the more games that you have that are co-op, either and it's couch co-op uh, as well as online co-op, you can play with people. Um, the more games that are like that, the more uh, it, it opens up them for having more people to play the game, and so it kind of increases the amount of potential sales that they could have. Because if I generally like the game and I want to play it with, say, my brother, I would say, hey, dude, you know, go out and get Star Trek so we can play through it together. Um, but her and I started playing it as, <laughs> uh, as co-op, and there was definitely a difference in my feelings, my initial feelings about the game and her initial feelings about the game when we were playing together. Um, so that's why we're laughing. Uh, so, what is there anything that you didn't like? The so controls far? are terrible. They're absolutely terrible. And I'm really bad at like point and shoot games in general. So to have clunky controls on top of very little ability, period, it was not fun, especially in like the um, the space battles. Oh, I know. Yes, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, Kind of, could you go into more detail on what you mean by clunky controls? The camera was stupid. It just kept <laughs> freaking out on me, and I couldn't get it to where I needed it to be, and I died so many times because I had no idea what was going on. And I couldn't figure out what the control was supposed to be. Um, it's not just a run and hit something game. They have various um, puzzles throughout the game, and they... 
they tried to have every single kind of game into it. So there's a flying section. There's a um, climb this um, stack of walls or whatever. And But they changed between them so quickly that it was hard to always adapt right away. Yeah, I, I, I really got the feeling that the game, um, it, it didn't ever feel complete in the sense that it, it seemed to be very uncertain of what kind of game it wanted to be. They almost um, did too much with trying to do trying to bring in all the aspects of gaming. Yeah, I, I, I would have liked to see a more streamlined um, game. I, way too many mini games for me. Like there's mm -hmm. one there was one scene when you fight the first big Gorn, like that you have to really fight. He's like a mini boss. Um, where Spock because I was playing I was playing as Kirk. Um, and Spock got knocked down, and you have to run over to help them up, which is pretty typical in, like, a third-person kind of... It's very, like, Army of Two type game, um, third-person shooter uh, type idea, where, you know, your, your ally goes down, you have to kind of help them. But it's a mini-game to heal your ally. Which is just stupid. Yeah, it's like the thing spins, and you have to hit a button at a certain time, and the more times you hit it right on, then the more health they get back when they come back up. It's just... I'm just not going to bother if it's an NPC, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, I've I've gotten I've got a list because when I was playing it, I, I actually I was I was writing things down of things that I liked about the game, things I didn't like about the game. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna kind of go through it, and then when when you're like, no, that's stupid. Now shut up. Um, you can tell me what you think. Um, so one of the one of the one of the things when I first, when we first started playing it, um, the, the scene starts right at the beginning uh, where you jump out of you you're right in the action. You're hiding behind um, some barricades. You pop up. You shoot a couple of Gorn. Um, you had some difficulty right away with that, right? Yes. Okay. A little confusion on... It was confusion, and my controller just wasn't registering for some reason. I yeah. was hitting the button, and it wasn't accepting it. Okay. All right. Um, when I saw that scene, I was like, oh, this game is going to be great. I mean, it throws you right into this action right away. Um, but then after that, it, I, I felt like there was a lot of cutscenes for like the first 20 minutes. I felt like I wasn't actually playing the game. Yeah, which was a problem because there was a lot of exposition for them to get out, and they could have structured it better. Yeah, I did like the voice acting though. They that use was the, definitely a highlight. Yeah, they use the the actual actors do the do the voice acting, um, and uh, the writing was relatively adequate. Uh, I don't like the fact that when you walk, when your two characters are walking around, like you can phase through each other. Like if you walk into each other, you can actually stand inside of each other, and that just seems like bad coding to me. Um, makes it seem kind of like a, a rushed game. Um, the, the yeah, the cover mechanic that they used, and this goes back to like the what kind of a game were they really trying to make? Um, the cover mechanic seemed a little hinky. Like it did, it felt like you couldn't always attach to the cover. You know, you know what I'm saying? No, no, I don't. But I think I do. <laughs> the the cover, like where your where your character hides behind. We were on the space station that was getting falling into the sun or something. Right, right. And and we kept getting hurt because we couldn't get behind cover. Yes, that was the problem I kept having in the very beginning. Well, yes. I died, you know, seven times in a row. Um, I felt like the game was trying to be like Mass Effect as well as... Eh, I keep coming back to this. The game just felt like it was trying to do too much. Like, they wanted to do Mass Effect, but they also wanted to do, like, Gears of War, but they also kind of wanted to do, like, these puzzle games and, like, a, a stealth action game. Mm -hmm. um, they needed to decide on one genre, and it would have right. been much better. Yeah. Uh, I had I had kind of an interesting experience when my character was running away from the exploding station that kind of goes back to, I think, kind of bad coding. Um, or I, I might have just been unlucky. My character actually ran off of the station. There was supposed to be an <laughs> invisible wall somewhere, 
and my character ran through this invisible, because there was no invisible wall there, and actually fell off the station, but there wasn't an automatic kill. Like, normally you fall off something, and the game has a kill box that will automatically kill your character, and there was no kill box. And so my character just fell down <laughs> to the very bottom of the map. And like the, I could see the station way above me, and I'm just running on in, on nothing, and I could see all space around me because that's the the outer layer, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, are, are you still stuck there? Is that where you are? <laughs> <in your game? laughs> no, because the station eventually exploded, and that automatically killed my character. But I had to wait for that to happen. I mean, um, it sounds to me like this game has got the problem of a lot of movies that are based on or a lot of games that are based on movies, even though it's not really based on a movie, it's kind of based on the space between two movies, mm -hmm. is that they have story that's solid and they try to like fit the game into it when most other games kind of go about it in a different way. They're forming the story and the game at the same time. Yeah. Um, and then it causes problems with mechanics and things like that because it's what they're trying to do. They gotta, they're trying to cram all these other things in there that another game might be like, no, we can't do that, but they're like, well, that's part of our story, so they keep it in there. I haven't played it at all. It's just, from what I'm hearing you two say, that's kind of what's coming to mind for me. Yeah, and I mean, there's lots of other little things during some of the cutscenes. Um, they don't they don't use pre-rendered cutscenes all the time, which isn't a problem. I don't I don't have a problem with them using in-game like uh, cut uh, cut scenes without it being pre-rendered, and sometimes you can show off how good a game is by doing that. Uh, but the problem with this game is like the walking mechanics are very um, dated. I mean, the, the the characters have specific like walk here. This is how your character walks, and then when you when you then this and then it moves to the resting position, whatever that resting position is for the character. Um, and so it looks really dated. It doesn't look very fluid. Uh, whereas a lot of games nowadays uh, use more motion capture. This one doesn't look like it used motion capture, um, which, again, I mean, they probably saved a lot of money by not having to do motion capture, uh, but it, it makes the game appear dated. Oh, there was grammar mistakes in the writing. Like, there was, like, <laughs> like that the... That kills me. <laughs> kills me. Um, like, there would be, like, things you were supposed to read, and there would be grammar mistakes, like, missing words, uh, misspellings, and things like that. Not a lot, but enough that I actually noticed it. So Right, which makes it sound, again, like it was rushed, like they had to get it out at a certain time between the two movies, mm -hmm. you know, before this. Because a normal video game, you could put it off six months and have it come out, but since this one had to be out before right. the second movie, yeah. you know. They had a oh, hard, well. fast release date that couldn't be changed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and um, I, I think a lot of times because a game, the game could have been amazing if they, I think that if they had had the time to like push it back and 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 do more like maybe beta testing and get an idea of kind of streamline what they what kind of a game they were trying to make. Um, I would have preferred to see a game like like Cap, like the captain said um, she would like to have been able to play more characters. I wish the game would have been more open. Now, I understand that the game was canon. You can't, yeah. And because of that, you can't have it be more open. Um, or you run into, like, the Mass Effect problem where you have all of these branching storylines that Mass Effect did a great job with in all of their sequels where they, they bring them all together and based on choices you made in the first game, it affects choices. It affects what kind of an outcome you have in the second and the third game. Um with Star Trek because it specifically has to appeal to a certain canon that they've set up, you can't have these choices. Like, I would have loved to have more, um, like, there's this planet that something is going on at and this planet that there's something is going on at, and you have to choose, like, which one are you going to go help or which one are you going to go do something about. Um, I think that would have made a great Star Trek game, but it would have been terrible for trying to keep to a specific canon. Right. A lot of what I'm hearing, though, is if you're a Star Trek fan, you probably want to play through this because it's canon. You're going to want to play through it and sort of, like, hear that story, mm -hmm. and it's going to be difficult. You should probably play it on the easiest setting because it's going to kind of suck because it's got hinky mechanics. Um, and if not, you can probably wait till another friend buys it and you go over there and they're like, I'm never playing that game, and then you can borrow it. Exactly. So... Um... 
the way we like to rate games, uh, Captain, is we like to rate them based on like a six point system. Okay. Um, and it, it kind of it kind of falls back to how much games typically are. A new game typically is sixty dollars, um, and so anything that's a six plus uh, typically means that it's worth paying sixty dollars for, and you should buy any of the extra content that they happen to they happen to release for it. So a game rated six plus, um, a a five is it's worth fifty dollars, and so on and so forth down. So, in your opinion, where would you rate this game? Based on what I've played so far, I would probably two or three, honestly. Um, that, that's, a, that's, that's a surprise to me. I was expecting <laughs> you to actually rate it a little higher. No. Um, I'm glad that we pre-ordered it because we got a bunch of extra stuff. So we got more skin packs and we got a little... Um, Lego Enterprise to build, which I'm very happy with. Um, but honestly, I don't think it's worth more than 25 bucks as a game. Yeah, and one of the skin packs was uh, Kirk in a in a leather jacket, right? Yeah, that's what that's, I wanted, basically. And that's what you really wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she tried. She, yeah, she 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 sell she tried to sell me on the oh, but you get this little Lego Enterprise, but yeah. in reality she's like no, mm-hmm. I just want a Kirk in a leather jacket. I want to see Kirk in a leather jacket. Mm-hmm. But Spock Spock got the like um, like like the stealth outfit or whatever. He got the um, the instructor's uniform that you that he wears at the academy. Oh, okay. Um, the black the black jumpsuit, whereas and Kirk also had the cadet reds. From okay. the academy, and there was another one for Spock, but I can't remember what it is. Now. I think that was the the stealth outfit or whatever the like um, secret um, Vulcan. I think it was like a Vulcan Science Academy. Thing. Okay, all right, yeah, something like that. I just I just remember I liked that one the best, and so that okay. was the one that I wore. Um, <laughs> so you know, I just realized that we kind of uh, skimmed over the uh, things that have been sapping our life because um, I'm not even following my own instructions on what to talk about. Well, I'm so, guessing for you two, at least two hours recently have been spent playing Star Trek: The Video Game. <laughs> so, James, you haven't got a lot of chance to talk. So, do you want to go ahead and tell us some of the things that have been sapping your life? Uh, well, I just recently picked up um, the 30th book in a series of books and the final one by an author, Raymond E. Feist. And besides the things that I had to do today, that is all I've done today. <laughs> Have and you finished it already? Or? I'm about halfway through, and I only started it. I started it l- late last night. I read a little bit of it, and I'm probably about 60% done. I read on a tablet, so I have the Kindle app. So... It's not pages anymore. It's all percentage. Mm-hmm. So I think I'm about 60% of the way through, um, and it's awesome. Uh, beyond that, a lot of work, 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 and work, and watching the Star Trek movie this morning when I saw it in IMAX, but we'll get to that a little later. <laughs> uh, Captain, what's been uh, eating up your time? Star Trek, but that's nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I had, well, I mean, obviously, like I said, um before the before the show started i had said that nobody wants to hear cuz for the last 2 weeks the thing that's been eating up my time is skyrim um i've basically been coming home from work and sitting down and playing skyrim for hours on end uh as the captain can attest to uh <laughs> so uh and yet i still have lots of miscellaneous quests and lots of uh side quests that i still haven't finished yet um, but there was a couple of uh, articles and some things that happened uh, this week that I kind of wanted to bring up and, and kind of get your guys' opinions on. <laughs> New teacher, an idea. Yes, nice. Um, uh, so, first of all, a few months ago, James, you and I... <laughs> <laughs> Completionists against Skyrim. Yes. <laughs> Um, at least, at least there isn't like a uh, a achievement for beating a hundred percent of the game. I don't know how you could ever do it because they keep coming out with content, downloadable content for it. Um, but I just picked up a four thousand point card, so I'll probably be spending that on some of the uh, content. 
Um, oh, so anyway, James and I, you and I were talking uh, a few months ago about some stuff that was at the Consumer Electronics Expo uh, that we thought was pretty cool. They were talking about the 3D printers. Um, for a reasonable, I mean, $2,400, you could get one in your home, which is a lot of money, but um, that's pretty reasonable for a 3D printer. Yeah, for cutting-edge technology, definitely. Right, right. And um, and as as you've also seen, you can make a gun with it now, too, so... Um, but, uh, uh, so one of the things I'd seen about this, there's a 3d printer that I had mentioned that one of the things they'll, the, that the future is going to hold with these kinds of things is in the medical field. And I actually found an article about a, uh, three month old, actually he's much older now, but he was three month three months old at the time. Uh, he was born with, um, a problem with his bronchial tubes and they actually used a 3d printer to uh, create a um, like like a stint type thing, uh, I can't remember specifically what it's called. Uh, to put in there uh, back in February of 2012 uh, to help him breathe, and you know, basically he's obviously he's they he's doing much better. And I just I thought that thing I thought that was kind of cool, um, but uh, yeah, because it's stuff we've talked about before. In reference to 3D printers, I think it's NASA is trying to do food because mm -hmm. it would be perfect for you know people in space. And uh, they're working on the pizza first because it's complicated in its layers. So the replicator's coming, Captain. Yes. Just a matter of time. Yes. Tea, we Earl Grey, it. hot. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong Captain, actually. He's well, you know. Good enough. <laughs> Um, so a couple of days ago, uh, May uh, May twenty first um, marked uh, uh, Microsoft came out, and we all knew it was coming. But they finally had their first big press conference um, about the Xbox uh, Xbox seven twenty uh, Xbox Infinity. Um, actually, it has been officially it is officially named now, and it is the Xbox One. Uh, James, have you gotten a chance to watch any uh of the video on it, or? A little bit. I mo mostly read some uh, Roundup articles because I was working. Um, and I, I like everything I heard. Uh, a lot of the specs seem very similar to uh, the PS4. Um, you know, but again, they say all these things in the first initial announcement, and then when it actually comes out, if you look and you compare, it'll be different. Um, I'm still for the Steam box, personally, myself. The things that I, I mean, when I was listening to it for the Xbox One, uh, I, I liked a lot of what they were saying, but I, I, whenever I hear those anymore, I always think back to my feelings when the Kinect first released. Not released, but when they were first talking about it, and they were talking about all these great things that the Kinect was going to be able to do. Um, and then it released, and it couldn't do all of those things, and they kept saying, "Oh well, you know, it's coming, it's coming. This is, you know, you'll be able to do this, this, and this." Uh, and then eventually, some of that stuff you could do, but there are still a lot of things that, when they first talked about it, that they were saying it was going to do that it doesn't do. And so, as I was listening to the thing, I was like, "Wow, this looks cool. I wonder how much of this they're actually going to have on the machine when it finally releases in." Um, this year sometime. Yeah, I mean, they didn't even give a specific date. I would assume that it's probably going to be like November-ish, trying oh, yeah. to get in for the the, the, the um, Christmas, Christmas. Oh, yeah. uh, season. So, I, I mean, I, I, November seems reasonable. If it comes in any sooner than that, I would, I would be kind of surprised. Do you remember if PS4 is slated for this year as well? Is that coming for, out later this year? I think that it is. I think that that's what the plan is. Um, it, but, it's and, a race, and then yeah, it's good. Yeah, and that you know, whereas Xbox originally came out a year before the PS3, which either the 360, not obviously Xbox, but yeah. um, and and that gave it a good jump. Um, but yeah, I mean, Vince in the chat room actually just said um, that everyone's waiting for E3, and and I agree. Um, I don't think that we got enough information with the Xbox uh, thing, and I'm I'm because I would like to know what their plans are for games. Like, it's great that they want to do, like, this all-home one entertainment system, um, which is cool. 
I'm a little concerned on how it's going to work, and I would be interested in knowing, does that mean I'll be able to hook up my 360 to my Xbox One so I can still play my Xbox games without having to... Because I've heard the Xbox One's not going to be backwards compatible. Yeah. So, I mean, that kind of irritates me. I'm probably going to buy an Xbox One anyway, um, but it it kind of frustrates me that now I'll have to have... Um, an Xbox One and an Xbox 360 in the same room. Uh, Vince had also said that there's a, a huge uh, Xbox 360 announcement coming at E3, so we'll have to see if maybe there's going to be some kind of... It would be nice. I mean, the Xbox One is supposed to have this kind of seamless um, transitioning between you know live TV and gaming and uh, videos and online and all kinds of stuff like that. That would be cool if you could hook up your 360 still to it. Well, there's an HDMI in, but that's supposed to be for your cable box, so you can, like, layer over while watching normal cable and, you know, integrate the two of them together and things like that. But we'll see. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to buy the 3D printer for $2,400. I'm just going to buy all three. I'm going to get the PS4, <laughs> the Xbox One, and the Steam box. <laughs> and then I will spend three months doing side-by-side -side comparisons and growing out my facial hair. Vince wants and to know. No, what, yeah, n no Wii U, Vince. Not going to do it. <laughs> I can't, can't. That's too much already. Um, Vince, you had mentioned that uh, you were saying that used games fee fees are bad. I, I agree with you. Is there some? Have you read an article somewhere that uh, had mentioned that there's going to be more used games? I read games an article fees? where they still hadn't. They said they still hadn't figured out exactly how they were going to do that but that there was probably going to be something that would prevent you from just flat out using used games that you might have to pay some kind of um, oh you know what i um thing. i did read uh they were there were some additional questions they asked uh one of the guys and um Vince is getting the link for us, but uh, I, he had said something about one of the biggest reasons why they put such a large hard drive in the in the one is because uh, all of the games that you put into the the machine are going to it's going to download the games, it's going to install the games on your Xbox. Mm. In that case, realistically, if it's going to fully install it, they did not put a large hard drive in there because 500 gigs. If you're installing full games, is not that much. You know, realistically, it's not a large hard drive anymore. However, however, it does have three USB 3.0 things, and it did say that you'll be able to hook up external hard drives to it. Now, that's kind of irritating to say, okay, here's your 500 gig hard drive in your machine, but you're going to use it up in you know 10, 15 games. So we're so you might want to get an external drive that's a couple of terabyte because you're not going to have enough room with your, you know, your your library of 25, 30 games that eventually you would assume that you would think you're going to have. Right, right. But we'll, we'll see. You know, we always know these first announcements. You know, right now it's a race to the market because Steambox announced they were going to release this year. And then, you know, Sony and Microsoft are like, you know, whether they were or not, once that happens, now they have to release this year pretty much. To yeah. maintain competitive, they can't let the new person come in and steal the whole market right at Christmas. You know what I mean? Um, so now it's a race, which is it's that's bad. It's bad that it's a race because they're going to shortcut and stuff's going to come out is going to be hinky. So anyone who's listening, I would wait at least a month before I bought any of them. You know, and then news from people that pay the five hundred bucks out of the box and see what what's actually what. Yeah, that's another thing is they haven't they haven't given any hint as to how much it's going to be. Mm -mm. Um, I'm guessing they'll probably all fall around the four to five hundred. Although the Steam Box is supposed to have a top end at like a grand, I think. But you know, the base model, the five hundred dollar model, and a lot of this is you know people don't really know. Um, but there'll be like a good, better, best, and the best will be the thousand dollar. It'll be like upgraded RAM, upgraded kind of everything, because um, it's basically a P, like a little square. PC, you know, pretty much. You know, now that now that you're talking about the the Steam Box and you you described it as a little square, um, the the Xbox One is also squared off, um, and it's huge. It's gigantic. Oh yeah. Um, they they had one up on stage, obviously, and the guy was standing next to it. You couldn't get any perspective until he was actually standing next to it. That thing is gigantic. It is a huge piece of machinery. Oh yeah. 
And I hope it's got good like side fans and not like top because that's the kind of piece you're going to need to sit other pieces of electronics on top of. You know, when something's that big in the normal entertainment center, but that's we're getting into stuff that's just yeah. Well, we'll keep you guys up to date on it as we get more more kind of uh, information on it. Um, but uh, 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 Vince had said in the chat that the uh, GameStop CEO stated that PS4 and uh, the Xbox One will be cheaper than consoles were at release last gen. Um, Xbox was three to four hundred dollars. PS3 was five to six hundred. Um, so they should be cheaper, according to the GameStop CEO. So, um, uh, you know, there you go. I'd uh, be really surprised if the Xbox One came out at, like, even $300 with everything it's got, the Connect already. I mean, it'd be awesome, you know. Then I'm definitely getting one. You know what I mean? I'll wait for Yeah, because that that's the other that thing is, is it does come with that additional uh, Connect um, thing which is supposed to be like this super amazing connect uh, that's way better than the one they have now that's so good it will even be able to read your heartbeat is supposedly how good it is again that's one of those things where I'm like that's it yeah it sounds great I I severely doubt at this point that it's gonna be like that on launch day if it is well, I'll be impressed welcome to the future <laughs> <laughs> um, Xbox brew coffee yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, two other things I, I just want to hit on, and then we'll move we'll move on because I'm really eating up the time. Um, the tornado in, in I, I believe it was Oklahoma. Um, it was. There were a bunch of them. Yeah. It. You know. It's. It was. It was horrible. Um, you know. Our hearts uh, for those of you uh, who also uh, who 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 believe in prayer. Uh, I please send your prayers to them. Um, if you guys want to donate, you can donate with Red Cross. Um, you can even donate with text nine zero nine nine zero, I think. But somebody will have to look that yeah, up for yeah, me. Look that up to be sure. There's yeah, a lot of. I don't want to text to the wrong one. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I went to look, and I ended up donating. I donated to the Humane Society. I was just scrolling down, and it's the one that hit me. You know, like I know people are going to be donating, and I just threw my money at that. You know, they help with like the stranded pets and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So Which there's um, a lot of them in Oklahoma. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And so there was 24 people uh the last I'd heard 24 people that were killed uh in the tornado. Um there were children actually at a school um when um when so I'm not laughing about the kids at the school. I'm laughing about what's <laughs> going on in chat. Uh so um Yes, so uh, there were kids at the school during the tornado, um, and today they actually had the funeral for one of the one of the children um, that had died during that tornado. Um, so our hearts uh, for those who pray the prayers. I hope you guys send out that way, uh, donate money, and um, you know whatever you guys can do. Uh, on a Lighter note, uh, in my opinion, a happier note, uh, the Boy Scouts of America held a vote today and uh, have, have, have voted 60% of the 1,400 people who, who go to the, these um, big votes things that they do, uh, voted and decided to allow openly gay scouts uh, into the Boy Scouts of America. Um, I think that that's a good step forward in in terms of human rights and and uh, uh, rights of people. Um, I'm disappointed that they weren't voting about uh, openly gay leaders, um, but I think openly gay scouts is a step in the right direction. We could talk about that for a long time. Yes, a really long time. But I was thinking about it before because I knew you you were going to mention this. Yeah, and I think it's really the best step will be when we don't actually have to have that legislation. You know, when somebody doesn't actually have to have that vote. And yeah, we'll get where there eventually, it doesn't but, make a difference. Yeah. Right, right. Um, but it's always good to have it on the books, you know. It, it, it is a step in the right direction, you know. And it is supposed to take effect January 1st of next year, so 2014. So, Justin, I was thinking about buying some jewelry. Do you have any suggestions for me? I do indeed have a suggestion for you. We have this wonderful... Uh, uh, jewelry company 
um, that uh, one the one of the person who actually uh, helps make the jewelry for this website uh, made our beautiful fancy uh, graphics that you have seen that you've seen on our Facebook page on our Twitter um, and uh, and every week or so on on here and um, if you guys would like to help support us by supporting her. Um, this is this really nice uh, jewelry. It's stravamax.com, S-T-R-A-V-A-M-A-X.com. Lots of great stuff. Uh, my wife has ordered I stuff. I have several <laughs> pairs of their earrings, actually. You should thought... have told me I would have worn them. <laughs> so, um, yes, lots of stuff uh, to look at and beautiful, beautiful work. Um, she does a wonderful job mm -hmm. and... Good stuff, and I don't remember because you know, my wife buys things, and I can never remember how much she spent on them. How much were some of the earrings that you've got? Um, they're pretty reasonable, actually. Um, the earrings I've got are between like fifteen and thirty dollars, um, which is actually pretty decent considering they're handmade and uh, individually made too. So that's actually a really, really good deal. And they they look really nice. I mean, they do. They they're very, very nice. Well yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so um, that was helping us pay our bills, so there you go. <laughs> so, there you go. Uh, we will move on to, um, this is kind of going to be, um, we're, let's, you know what, because I don't want to send people away uh, before we talk about the movie. Uh, let's spend 10, 15, 20 minutes talking about the uh, NASA versus privatized space exploration, and then we'll come back to the movie if that's okay with everybody. Um, you know, we could probably push the NASA to another thing. I think privatized space exploration is probably a good thing, but then they need to make money off it. It's like pharmaceutical companies. It's kind of a weird thing. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, but I think we let's talk about another time. We're, we're definitely going to run over talking about the movie already. Um, you know, so let's just talk about the movie. I mean, if people... Okay. Spoiler alerts, uh, movie happens in Yeah, space. if you haven't seen it, go away. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So if you guys haven't seen the movie yet, um, you can go ahead and, and click off. Or if, if you don't care about spoilers, that's fine. Stick around. Um, and, and you can catch the rest of the, the broadcast later. If you do care about spoilers, um, then there you go. So, um, so happens in space. What did you say? <laughs> it, happen, it happens in space. I'm just yes, throwing spoilers yeah. out. Yeah, spoiler happens in space. Enterprise is involved. Yeah, Vulcans. Vulcans. So, uh, uh, initial kinds of feelings about it. Uh, my wife and I, uh, the captain, and I went to go see it on the premiere, a Wednesday night premiere at 8 p.m., which was way better than like a midnight premiere, I have to tell so you. So much better. So much nicer. Um, and it was great because when we were coming out, the people who were coming for the midnight premiere were all lined up waiting to get in, and we're like, <laughs> yeah, we saw it already. <laughs> um, but uh, we saw it in 3D, and um, yeah, so I, I want, I've been talking a lot this show, so uh, uh, Captain, would you please take us in and give us your kind of review on the movie? I'm actually going to have James go first. Oh, well, there you go, James. Okay, um, well, I just saw it this morning because I'm an old man and I can't remember things, so if we're going to review <laughs> something, I have to deal with it in the same 24-hour period before I sleep again. Um, number one, I saw it in IMAX 3D, and of all the 3D movies I've seen, this was the best executed for the 3D. Mm -hmm. I think they did fantastic. They didn't have a lot of those scenes that moved too fast in the 3D. Uh, that kinda... weren't, like, obviously 3D scenes. Right, right. Um, I just thought it was so well executed in that respect. And I was really, like, that's one of the things that I really walked away uh, being impressed. Um, also, I feel like there's kind of like a formula that they followed that kind of matched up with the first one a little bit, you know. Um, I'm really going to get into spoilers here, people, so earmuffs if you don't want to hear no, seriously, it. Seriously, yeah. Yeah, um, you know, like... Uh, Kirk loses the Enterprise again. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, like him and Spock, they don't trust each other again. And then there's some horrible big emergency and it all gets back together. <laughs> but, you know, even like being kind of predictable in that way, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I was, I was enraptured with the movie from beginning to end. Even the areas that were predictable to me still played out well. Even like, mm -hmm. oh, I, I feel this is going to happen. They still executed it well, even me knowing it was going to happen. 
The war um, course scene, especially. I knew exactly where it was going when Scotty, yeah. when they were at the door. Now. And, but the twist that they added to it, where it was Jim inside the war course instead of Spock, I think worked very, very well. Right, right. right. Cause it, it was a reference to the old... Yeah, it was what, a I don't very know, I heavy it. nod to that, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah overall, though, I would... I would recommend seeing it if you can see it in IMAX 3D. Um, you know, a quality movie where the 3D is done so well. Mm-hmm. It, I, I mean, maybe we're moving in that direction. There'll be more of them. Um, but I haven't seen one leading up to this. And I was a really big fan of the the original relaunch title. I mean, it's a great movie. It's one of those movies that I can just play whenever, you know. Like, oh, it's on? Okay, I'll watch that, you know, because yeah. it's so good. Um, J- James, did you yeah. uh, see um, The Hobbit in 3D? I don't no, I, I don't think I did. I don't remember for sure. I don't think I did because I think I want to saw that with my mom and she hates 3D. Okay. All right. Cuz I felt that I've I've I'd mentioned before that 3D for forever has always given me headaches whenever I watch it. Um The Hobbit and uh the um the last Harry Potter movie that I saw, all of those had good 3D. They didn't give me headaches. I didn't have problems with them. Um, you know, in the first couple of minutes, it was a little weird, and then I just settled in, and it was fine. Uh, and as long as 3D keeps going in that direction, then I'm gonna have I'm gonna have no problem with it for the foreseeable future. I know that with previous 3Ds, they would always give me headaches because I could not focus on the movie. Yeah. But would you agree though that this one was um, one of the better 3D movies you've ever seen, as far as the execution of the 3D? Yeah, not only that is um, the 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 high definition of it, it really looks good. I mean, you can see it, and I that's pro that might be one of the reasons why they chose the first scene that they actually have on this very colorful planet with yeah. um, lots, lots of um, things going on at the same time, lots of movement, lots of action, real exciting, funny dialogue going on. Um, I it almost really got hit of... by a javelin. I swear yes, I almost got yes. hit one right, yes. right over my shoulder. <laughs> right and, that, and, you know, the thing, the thing I loved about that is because it, when they first started doing 3D in, fil- in movie theaters, again, you know, they, they got really gimmicky, like Journey to the Center of the Earth. There were, you know, it was very gimmicky. They had that kind of stuff. Beowulf. Um, Beowulf, yeah. Lots oh of gosh. really gimmicky sort of 3D stuff. But this one, even when they go that route, you see that javelin fly past you. Um, it it's didn't feel fun. Yeah, it didn't feel gimmicky. It felt like, oh my god, there's a javelin right there. Yeah. Um, and it actually, that, that, and they do that only a couple of times that I remember in the movie, but every time it, kept, it catches you kind of by surprise. It felt natural to the movie. It didn't feel like they were just doing a cheap gag. Right. And that's J.J. Abrams, though. I mean, his execution is always pretty much spot on. And that's that's what I was going to say is um, I've actually started watching Lost. I've never seen it before. I'm in, I think, the third season. Um, and uh, and that's a J.J. Abrams. And and I, I, I didn't watch it in kind of preparation for this movie. I just, I you know, The Walking Dead was off the air, is off the air right now. And so I've got nothing to watch. So I was like, yeah, oh, I'll watch Lost. Um, Spoiler it, alert, there's something weird about the island. <laughs> yeah. So if you haven't seen the first episode... <laughs> um, but uh, it, it felt very J.J. Abrams. I mean, he's he's really good about those, those action. He has decent, real kind of um, compelling dialogue between the characters and has a, a, a nice mystery to a lot of the things um, that he tries to play out very well and, and it seems very natural how it comes out um, it does make me look forward to the upcoming Star Wars movies um, knowing that he's directing those um, yeah I mean it, it adds a, an incredible amount of credibility to it because he he's handled this already the Star Trek movies with just the right amount of you know, like you can tell that he he loves what he's doing. You know, he loves this mm-hmm. and he's remaking it with that love and that intent to do it right. And Star Wars, for for my money, Star Wars, you know, is is a, a more precious commodity than Star Trek. And maybe it's because <laughs> Star Trek 
has had like I don't know how many episodes of TV shows. There's, There's so like much more. There's like 700 episodes and right. you know, 13 movies. There's so much more content, and Star Wars has <laughs> six, three actual movies, three really, really good <laughs> yeah. movies, and three other movies. So I mean, <laughs> three other movies. <laughs> but you know, just. He does. He has the ability. Like he, he loves it as much as we do. Is the impression I get when it comes to stuff like this. Um, but two more things about Star Trek. I love the fact that there was more of Simon Pegg because uh, yes. I just love him and his yes. delivery is great. And they really need to like add like because there's more of these. There's at least one more movie coming out, right? Yeah, uh, all the actors are signed up for three and. Uh... Paramount is pushing for a third movie in 2016 because that's the 50th anniversary of Star Trek. Okay, they need to do more with Bones besides having. Thank you. Really Want to like like make sure that Kirk's all right and complain that he is the, he is a doctor, not whatever, you know, because he's a good in character. Fairness, he's really good in the first job, one. Yeah, most of his job is to make sure Kirk's not being an idiot. But the basis, the the thing everybody loves about Star Trek, the original series, is. The Kirk, Spock, Bones triumvirate, yeah, and they are just not using it like they should in these movies. Right, and there was so much more of him in the first. Them, but yeah, yeah, he was he was much more of a fully fleshed out character in the first one mm-hmm. than yeah. he seemed to be in this one. Um, yeah, I I was disappointed that there wasn't more Bones, and not because my wife likes the, you know Bones more than like any other character. Other than maybe that's Kirk. not true. You like my heart belongs to Jim, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, a lot of his a lot of his scenes seemed like he was very peripheral. He was he was a background yeah. character. Um, it, I actually it was nice to have Scotty um, Simon Pegg's character um, a lot more. I wish they would have had him even more. I was really pissed off when he like walks out during the first third of the movie. You know, yeah. where where he's like he's like, Okay, well I'll give you my resignation. And Kirk's like, Okay. I'm gonna go make Shaun of the Dead too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and I was like, No, 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 Scotty has to be there. Like that I I that was one of and the And look what happened when he wasn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything got I mean, yeah. <sighs> so how did you guys feel about the main villain? I hated him. But that sets up stuff later on in a way that's pretty awesome. I think Justin's first me, isn't it? Well, something just happened Whoa. weird. I, I was having some connection issues, but I feel like maybe I'm back. Yeah, I think you are back. Yeah, that there was weird. Go. We were talking, okay. and, like, you just put it in. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, I was saying, how, how, did, how did you guys feel about the, the main villain in this movie and Captain? I hated him. I think for this movie, what they really, really, really needed was a new plot line. The first movie, they established that they that there was a separate timeline and that this was the reboot of the original series. That's why it's called the alternate original series. What they needed for this movie was a completely original story. They needed to not rely on um, the past so much. And I think pulling not only um, a character from the original series, but such an iconic character from the original series was a huge, huge mistake. And ah, oh, I wanted to like this movie so much. And I did like a lot of it, but the plot let me down so bad. How do you think he did as an actor portraying the part? Honestly, I'm a huge fan of Benedict Cumberbatch in Sherlock. I absolutely oh, yeah. love him in that. Fantastic. I thought he was terrible in this movie. I really thought some of um, his scenes were just flat. Yeah, a lot of his his character seemed forced. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, it, there didn't seem to... Khan, there's so much depth required for Khan. Um, and it's not that he couldn't have done that. It's just that they didn't have him do that. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm with you. Like I, you and I completely agreed. I think even in the drive home, we were talking about the fact that they spent so much time on that first movie, and then I feel like it's okay for you to make nods to the to the the original mm-hmm. series that you you know and we say we want those nods to the original series, right? 
Right, because we they don't still... want you to steal the original series, though. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and having first of all taking the plot and then just kind of twisting it up a little bit and then rehashing it for this movie, and then doing like what seems to be a good idea is switching Spock and Kirk's position in it and and killing off Kirk, and then basically doing the third movie in like fifteen minutes because it's yeah. like you know let's just bring Kirk back to life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However, that last chase sequence was so unnecessary. Yeah. I was so ready for it to end at that point. Yeah, but you know, at least it gave Ahura a chance to come down and kick ass. She kicked ass on Kronos. Are you kidding me? Yes, but it gave her a chance to <laughs> kick ass in a red dress. Again. Okay. <laughs> I think she was in a red dress. I've only seen the yes, movie once, so don't dress. blame me. Okay. <laughs> um, you, you know, in in the in the chat, uh, Kim had mentioned uh, that she thought he was awesome, and I agree that the the actor is awesome. I don't think that he's as awesome as he could have been, <laughs> but I think that we were already. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, she hasn't seen the movie. She was yeah. joking. I knew she hadn't seen the movie. She doesn't want to see the movie. I saw it on Facebook. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Let me get this egg <laughs> off of my face. Okay. Hey, you were you were seven minutes behind on our comment, anyways. She could have been talking about anybody. <laughs> yeah. That's be, that's because everybody else was talking. All right, jeez. All right, <laughs> God, man. Well, if you're not a Star Trek fan, then you know Kim's telling. You know, us I know a lot of people who aren't Star Trek fans and still enjoyed it, and they went out of their way in promoting this movie to say that. Even if you're not a Star Trek fan, you can come see this. And generally, the attitude was, don't worry. Even if you like this movie, that doesn't mean you're a Trekkie. Which kind of really annoyed me. I was going to say, that, that seems a little insulting. Yeah. To, yeah. I, it, you know, the, the Trekkies are people who like Star Trek. I mean, if you like Star Trek, you're a Trekkie. That doesn't mean there's you nothing have to wrong be completely obsessive with it. Yeah. yeah. And there's nothing wrong with being a Trekkie. What's wrong with being a Trekkie? Honestly. O only if you're an overly defensive Trekkie, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> or if you live in your parents' basement. <laughs> and wear your non-red Star Trek uniform all the time. <laughs> oh, well. We don't wear it all the time, but we did dress Not up to time, go see. But... We, did go we did dress up to go see the uh, premiere. See, that's just fun. We did. You know. <laughs> it is. And, and Brennan, yeah. And, and Brennan and, kept wearing his uniform, which is a red shirt. He wore it for like seven days straight. He didn't want to change out of it. And by Brennan, you mean Justin? I get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had a fun. I had a fun because you know I, I like the movie. I thought I, I like Star Trek. I don't like it to the same extremity as my <laughs> wife does, um, but uh, I do like it. And but in the middle of the movie, I really had to go to the bathroom, so I got up and went to the bathroom but as I was walking back there were the people who were starting to line up for the midnight premiere and I had my blue um, uh, shirt on and and you know my it doesn't matter I was dressed like a Star Trek nerd. You were in you know. uniform. Yeah yeah and as I'm walking by like they had seen me walk out and I, I, I saw them like exchange looks and then as I was <laughs> walking back I, I just looked over at them and I smiled and I threw them the old you know Vulcan uh, uh, live long and prosper. <laughs> just kept walking. <laughs> so. Well, you remember when we were at Cardiff, in our uniforms in the middle of the city. Yes, we went grocery shopping in our Star Trek uniforms, which was extremely fun. Six people in Star Trek uniforms in the UK. It was great. I would have just kept complaining that they didn't have replicators here in this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, we are running out of time, but I don't have any problem with continuing to talk about the movie if there's anything else anybody else wanted to hit about the movie. Um, you know, I mean, I think we all agree that it was good. I mean, I'm still thinking back on it, and I, I'd have to see it again. To I don't know if it's going to live up to the first one for me, um, but I'd have to watch it again to really know, but I know when it comes out on Blu-ray, I will be buying it. Yes. Because um, it is a movie that I will watch again. Mm -hmm. um, 
I would give it. I'd give it a thumbs up. I don't know what we're scaling it on. I would not pay sixty dollars for it, Justin. <laughs> I could give it a six. Um, but I will plan on like purchasing it pretty much right away when it comes out on Blu-ray. I don't. I don't know how much our tickets were. Uh, they were seventeen. Okay. All right. And then you have to buy popcorn and drinks, so that's another four hundred dollars. Yeah. You don't have to, actually, Justin. Don't listen. Uh, the place we went to actually had a note that said you must purchase popcorn and <laughs> drinks or something. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I think I would, I would say I agree. The first movie, I think, was better. Uh, good thing they cut down the lens flares a little bit. On the second movie, there were and less yet, lens there was flares. still one scene where it completely threw the entire entire emotional impact off. Yeah. When Carol was talking to her father, and this lens flare comes up behind her in the middle of this huge emotional scene, and it completely whited out the screen. I was like, really, guys? In the middle of her actually doing something useful, you just ruined it. Thanks so much. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I'm knocking over my microphone. <laughs> uh oh. So um if there's if there's nothing else anybody wants to hit with the movie, we can kind of wrap up. Anything else? No, I think we're good. I liked it. All right. There we go. Go see the movie. If you get an opportunity to see it uh in theaters in three D, do so. Uh we Definitely recommend it. Worth it. Yeah, it's it's a good it's good it's good it's good, it's good to see in the theaters. Um, if you wait until it comes home, that's fine. You know, it's a it's a fairly solid, decent movie. Uh, anybody, obviously, who is a fan should definitely get it. Um, anybody who is you know new to Star Trek or is just generally interested, it's it's worth seeing. So there you go. Um, I don't have anything else. We'll have to hit the NASA and uh, uh, versus. Uh, Privatized space exploration another time. Sorry if you guys showed up for that and not the Star Trek reviews. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I apologize. We'll refund your money. Unless, of course, you actually spent any money, and then we will not be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so next week uh, we have our final guest for our guest a week um, shows in May. And then James and I will be starting a more structured format for each one of the shows starting in June. And it looks like, James, we're looking at another drunk cast in June, right? Uh, I hope so, because he's really been wearing on me, and I really need to get some drink in me. <laughs> so uh, we may have a guest uh, for that one, uh, because um, our, uh, our number one fan in Norway has expressed an interest in being a guest on one of our drunk casts. So it is uh, very likely we will have a guest for that one. Um, but yes, so next uh, week we are talking with Lane. Again, you guys may have remember him as a very first guest that we ever had, um, and he will be coming back to talk with us about um, weight loss and weight gain. Um, me talking about weight loss, he wants to talk about some weight gain that he's, he's gone through. Uh, and then we're also going to be talking about uh, genetically modified uh, foods, right? Correct. So there you go. Um, there you go. So uh, thanks again for everybody who joined us in the chat. Thank you, Sequoia. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Vince. I think that's everyone who joined us in chat. I'd, I'd hate to forget somebody and, you know, get tracked down and beat with uh, a sock full of soap in the middle of the night. Um, so yes, thank you for joining us. Uh, if if you guys are um, watching this later, make sure to like the video, make sure to share it, make sure to uh, let us know that you saw it, that you were interested in it, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see more of, what you know, whose face is ugliest, whose face is most best looking, you know, my daughter crying on the other side of the table. Uh, James, would you uh, kind of wrap us up because um, I'm going to mute me for a second and find out why she's crying. Uh oh. Okay. Um, you know, as always, uh, fun episode. Make sure uh, you visit uh, Strava. I don't remember what it's called anymore. Stravamax. Stravamax.com. Uh, look over their jewelry. You probably missed Mother's Day. You know half of you missed Mother's Day. Okay. <laughs> you know what happened. You need to jump on there. You need to get something for your mom. 
It's handcrafted. It's going to mean a lot. Or your um, wife, if your wife had has had children, maybe with you or someone else. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that is a valid point. Um, <laughs> otherwise, thanks as always for listening, and we will see you all again in about a week. <laughs>